Why did Jesus ask Peter, Do you love me three times? You see, Jesus asked Peter three times, Do you love me? As recorded in John 21, 15 to 17. This um occurred when Jesus was having breakfast with his disciples soon after his resurrection. And uh, Jesus used this opportunity to encourage and exhort Peter about his upcoming responsibilities and even to prophesy the manner in which Peter will die by asking Peter, do you love me three times? Jesus was emphasizing the importance of Peter's love and uh, un- unswerving obedience to his Lord as necessary for his future ministry. Now, let's look at the verse. Uh, in John 21, 15 to 17, the Bible says, The third time he said to him, Simon, si- son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now, we have to understand that Jesus begins by questioning Peter about his love for him. And each time Peter answers in the affirmative, Jesus follows up with the command for Peter to feed his sheep. And uh, his meaning is that if Peter truly loves his master, He is to shepherd and care for those who belong to Christ. His words reveal Peter's role as the leader of the new church, the body of Christ. There in Jerusalem, that would be responsible, that he will be responsible for spreading the gospel after Jesus' ascension to heaven. It is also also possible that... uh, By his repeated question, Jesus is subtly reminding Peter, reminding Peter of his three denials. It is like a way of counseling. And uh, there is no doubt those denials and how he felt when Jesus turned to look at him at that moment were seared deeply into uh, Peter's mind. I'm sure you can remember that. It it wasn't lost on Peter that Jesus repeated his question to him three times, just as Peter previously denied him three times. Let's read the passage. In Luke 22, 54, 62, it says, Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed, followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the fire firelight. She took she looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly, this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words. The word the Lord had spoken to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. So now, there is also an interesting contrast when you look at the Greek words for love used in uh, John 21, 15-17. It's, like, uh, it's like Jesus is asking, Simon, do you agape me? You see, Jesus is using the Greek word agape when you go to the translations, which refers to unconditional love. It's like, it's too much. Do you really love me unconditionally, Peter? Do you? 
Are you seeing the point here? Are you seeing the point here? So, it's like he's telling Peter, I want you to love me with all that you are and all that you have. This is also a picture to us as Christians. This is the kind of love we should love Jesus like. And I'm going to show you by the end of this video what was so necessary that Jesus had to say this. So, when you look at all that when Jesus was saying con concerning this agape love, let, let's just see John 21 verse 17. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love, love you me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, love you me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now, <laughs> you see, Jesus uses the word phileo before, and Peter again responds with, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Again, using phileo. I, 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 I tend to believe that the point in the different Greek words for love seems to be that Jesus was stretching Peter to move him from phileo to agape love, the kind of love which is not just the normal brother love, more than love, the kind of love that you can even die for someone. Unconditional love. That's what Jesus wanted. And uh, whatever the reason for the threefold, do you love me? Question. Jesus was impressing on Peter how important his new role of tending to the flock of Christ followers would be. And when someone repeats repeats instructions uh, uh, to us over and over, we quickly understand that it's extremely important for us to heed them. We have to heed the instructions. You see, Jesus wanted to make sure that Peter understood this vital charge he was tasking him with and the ultimate reason for it to follow him and glorify God. Just look at uh, John 21 verse 19. It says, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said unto him, follow me. You see, he was meaning there's a certain kind of love that Peter will have to have for him to be able to even die for Christ. Remember, Peter was crucified upside down. What kind of love was that, that you allow yourself to be crucified? He said, I don't want to be crucified like my Lord. Make, crucify me upside down. That's the kind of love that Jesus is asking all of us. That's the kind of love that God wants us to have. Do you love Jesus? Because he himself, he loved you so much that he laid his life for you. 2,000 years ago, while you were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. So that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Do you love Jesus? All you need to do to be saved is to hear that gospel and believe that gospel. But you cannot hear the gospel or look for the gospel if first you don't even understand that you're lost. You see, many people think that I am saved because I go to church, because I give offering, because I help the poor. But Jesus wants us to understand that we are lost sinners. And after you know that you're lost sinner, that is the bad news. You hear the good news, which is what Jesus did for you. He died for you. He gave you unconditional love. And then once you know, you hear the gospel, you understand the gospel so that it can move from your mind to your heart because it is from the heart that we believe. And then after that, you confess what you believed. This is the kind of love that Jesus wants us to have. And all you need to do is confess. Tell Jesus, Jesus, I understand now that you really died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I believe you. And I take you for your word. Brothers and sisters, if you believe Jesus died for you, he was buried and rose again, then you're saved, sealed, and sanctified. 
and you'll never perish if you enjoy these videos please you can uh, like the video you can share and also subscribe and check at the description below we have other channels that we also post check them out and also share to your friends god bless you and have a good time